Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we have a 2015 Mazda 3 sedan, 6 speed manual, uh, 4 cylinder. And customer drove about 3 hours away because his check engine light's on and he can't pass the uh, state emissions inspection. Something to do with the EVAP system. The car has 113,000 miles on it, he drives it daily like 200 miles a day and these are the codes that I just pulled P1450 unable to bleed up fuel tank vacuum P0456 EVAP system leak detected P0451 EVAP system pressure sensor switch a circuit range performance now customer says this first happened in October when it started getting cooler and he took it to his local mechanic and I think the first step was they replaced the charcoal, charcoal canister because that has the pressure sensor, fuel tank pressure sensor integrated in the canister. Guess what? That didn't help. Um, then second, let's see, parts cannon attempt was the purge solenoid which lives right here. Now these are brand new OEM genuine Mazda parts. Pop that on. And he said something changed, only the 451 code remained. And sometimes the check engine light would go off on its own. So did something change? I don't know. Um, also the gas cap was replaced, OEM Mazda part. But right now I see all three codes stored in memory. So I think the original problem is still present. So let's look up some information on these trouble codes see if there's any technical service bulletins out I mean this car is not rusty um, seems like kind of a weird problem so let's do some research alright time for some all data research so the code 1450 right here description detection condition fuel tank pressure sensor seat mount function restriction between canister and release side passage like that's the vent valve clogging between fuel tank and fuel tank pressure sensor purge solenoid malfunction PCM malfunction so here's a description of the test that the car runs and you know, it closes off the vent valve, opens the purge valve, and measures the drop in vacuum at the fuel tank pressure sensor. Now, if the PCM determines the abnormal negative pressure in the fuel tank is being generated, it stores this DTC. So here we go. There's target pressure. This is normal, and this is malfunction. You can see the purge solenoid is on right here. This, the vent solenoid is on right here, so it seals the tank. And it should start at zero. Okay. Well, we're right in the engine computer. Let's take a look at the live data. Let's see. Fuel tank pressure sensor. Fuel tank pressure. Transducer. Okay. It's saying minus 0.1 PSI. I would think the car right now, the vent should be open, it should be at zero PSI. Let's see if there is a data PID for the EVAP vent valve. Let's see, purge duty cycle, vent valve, okay. It's off. And that pressure sensor is not at zero. So that's a problem. Remember, the canister is replaced. All OEM parts, the pressure sensor is brand new. So either there's a circuit problem or there's an actual, you know, the sensor's not reading correctly. Um, looking up some technical service bulletins, I found this one. It says, check engine light on, P0451 in cold weather. Now, 
Since when the engine started the first time after parking cold weather below freezing, some vehicles may exhibit check engine light with a 451 fuel tank pressure sensor characteristic malfunction stored in memory. So for the 451, let's see if it has a little chart here. So basically it does its check pressure should drop and then leave vehicle for two hours or more fuel tank pressure is equal to barometric pressure that's what it should read 2.6 volts right now we're only at 2.2 or 0 0.1 negative 0 0.1 psi so that's that is too low so i think we're seeing the fault right now let's keep reading this procedure <clears throat> This concern may be caused by an increase in discharge resistance due to water accumulated and frozen in the canister vent hose. Interesting. Customer having this concern should have their vehicle repaired using the following repair procedure. Lift it up. Check if the canister vent hose is clogged with frozen water. <laughs> well, it's not that cold right now, so I don't think we'll find frozen water, but there still might be water sitting in this hose. And they say for the four-door sedan, the, this is the OEM fix for this problem, is use a utility knife or pliers with cutters to just cut this hose um, right after it exits the canister at this low spot and kind of, you know, cut it at an angle so you don't get this water accumulating in this lower section of the hose. So that's very interesting. I'm going to monitor the scan data, A, take the fuel cap off, see if anything changes, and if we still have this negative pressure, we're going to go under the car, either take off the hose and see if that changes at all, and see if the hose is restricted. Alright, we have the car safely jacked up, some jack stands, and here is our canister right up there. Now. The fuel tank pressure sensor, see the wire going up to that, there's the big vent hose, and then there's a little hose that I think is just the reference atmosphere to the fuel tank pressure sensor. That's the one that the TSB is talking about, this little, little hose coming down, and it comes uh, down here, 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 right into the body of the vehicle. So this is a convenient place to mess around with it. Let's take a look at our scan data. We're at 2.3 volts right now. So if I take this off, it just goes into the frame of the car. There we go. Okay, yeah, we do, yeah, there it is, zero PSI. So I think this hose is gonna be restricted. Let's uh, unplug it from the actual canister and blow through it, see if any water comes out. And if it does, the fix will be to uh, cut it like, you know, like the factory recommendation is. All right, so I got this end of the hose off, and we have this end of the hose. I'm gonna blow through it and see if any water drips out. See if that TSB was correct. We know on scan data that definitely made a difference when I unplugged this end of the hose. Maybe the restriction is like somewhere in the nipple. But let's uh, let's do a little flow check here. No. Flow check passes. Now I'm gonna hook it back up to the nipple and blow through it. See if anything, if it's restricted. Yep, there it is. So, whatever it plugs into, into the frame rail, it's restricted. <laughs> it's like a restricted vent. So we can try to get this little nipple out and see if there's a plug. Well, there's the proof. I got the nipple out. So the hose attaches right here. And sure enough, there's just dust and dirt completely plugging up this little hole that's supposed to be venting into the frame. That's it. Customer concern verified. We have the proof. 
So what's the fix? We can either clean this out or to prevent that from happening, we can just, I don't know, reroute the hose and just leave it like that. I think that will definitely fix the problem without this stupid little vent nipple. Clear the codes. I'm confident that there's no, no other issues here. All the other parts are brand new. Fuel tank pressure sensor reads perfectly. This car is fixed. All right, so this is known good data when you have no pressure at the tank, zero PSI, 2.6 volts on the fuel tank pressure sensor. Let's go into the engine computer. Well, let's just clear all the codes out. Clear DTCs. And then for, uh, for bonus footage, the owner was complaining of a parasitic battery drain. He said it's about three days of sitting, the car goes dead. He does have an aftermarket uh, camera installed. So we can measure the draw, unplug the camera, see what the draw is. We'll leave that for, uh, for bonus footage. All right, so a little bonus footage on the parasitic draw. We let the car sit for over 20 minutes, and it started off at 1.2 amps, then it went down to 0 0.5, now we're at 0 0.3, and it seems to be hanging out right around 0 0.3 amps. Now, like I said, the owner has this aftermarket dash cam plugged in. Right there, it's, well, it's on. So let's just pull this whole USB plug out. And we're down to a beautiful 7 milliamps. So confirmed aftermarket dash cam is pretty hungry. Draws, oh, almost 300 milliamps. That will definitely drain your battery in about a day. So it might help keep your car safe, but if you can't start it, then <laughs> that's kind of a, a wash. Good. Yeah. Um, so that's that. What do we learn on this one? Information and research, uh, way before the parts can. Didn't need a canister, didn't need a purge valve. Stupid little vent on a hose that just you know goes to this fuel tank pressure sensor. It was clogged up with dust. Not even ice or water. So the TSB was very helpful. And just reading the code descriptions and looking at scan data, you literally plug in the scanner and look at that fuel tank pressure. If your gas cap is off, you should be a zero PSI. We were not at zero PSI, so that just right there, that's your first check. Got pretty uh, pretty lucky on this one. I mean, it was it didn't take too long, um, but again, very directed approach, data driven, and that's that. So owner will keep enjoying his Mazda with the hopefully no check engine light. He'll keep me up to date, clear the codes out. And to avoid this parasitic draw, maybe he'll look for another dash cam that isn't so power hungry. Right, Neil? <laughs> well, yum, yum, yum. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 you it must be getting keeping your windshield warm. It actually, it's a fun job. Like, you know, especially when you... rear camera as well. Oh, it's when dual camera. Yeah, if I come out and it's frosty, there will be a little. Hey, you don't need me to diagnose that. No. There it is, a parasitic draw. Wow. All right.